going to put my shoe box into that corner and I'm going to trace around, around my shoe box until I get a piece of paper in my shoe box. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna trace around and then I'm gonna have lines that are there. So let me do that real quick. Okay, and then that way I can show you. I'm gonna do it with a Sharpie so you guys can see. Uh -huh. So here's how mine's gonna look. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So that's the size of my shoe box that I've, that I've uh, traced. And now I have two lines, one along the side here and one along the bottom. And those are gonna be the lines that I'm going to cut off, okay? Now I have a paper cutter, but if you don't have a paper cutter and you don't have someone to help you, just use scissors, okay? And you're gonna cut along the edges and cut along the top, okay? If you have, don't have me on speaker view, put me on speaker view so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and with the magic of the internet. Hi, Olive Kogan, we had trouble getting in, so we have a quick question. Are you essentially cutting a larger piece of paper to fit the inside of your box floor? Yes. So okay. Yes, thank you. So okay, you'll, thank you. you'll trace it, and then that way, um, when we are ready, we're going to put it into the back of our box. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Christine, if they already have a piece of paper that fits the back of their box, do they need to do anything? No, they can just wait for a minute. Okay. I actually, with the magic of the internet and the magic of the magic apple, ta-da, here's the piece I need. Okay. So when you have the piece that you need cut, you're actually going to cut a tiny bit more off the edge, even more than your line. And you want to know why you're going to do that? Because you're outside of your box is ever so slightly bigger than the inside of your box. So once you've done that, you're going to cut a little smaller around one side and along the top. Okay. Excellent. Alexa, can you question? That step. I'm sorry. My paper is um, smaller than my box. But I see. That's okay, good. Will it fit inside nicely? Mm -hmm. Excellent, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, Jade, go for it. Um, so, um, so do you mean like we have the size of our box to put uh -huh. inside, but then um, we cut a little bit more? Yeah, because if you try right now, I think you might see that it, it doesn't fit exactly flat in your box, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you gotta cut just a little bit more all along the edges. Uh, actually, I want just the side and the top. Okay. <clears throat> okay, somebody asked me to slow down, no problem. You go ahead and just tell me when you're ready for the next step. So, are we supposed to like cut it out? Cut it out? Yes, cut it out, yep. Yes, Braylon. Cut it a little smaller than the lines that you've drawn. Okay. So remember, right now, if you need some help, I'm going to just keep waiting for a minute. Okay, and I'm going to actually, if you guys have been in any of my other classes, I tell silly jokes while we wait. That makes me happy. All right, so I'm going to put some silly jokes up, and we'll listen to those while we're waiting for everyone to finish cutting their box. When you are done, you can put a thumbs up for me. That way I know. Okay. And for some reason, my computer is going so slow. Okay, yeah, Chucky. Okay, Ellie and Jackie, you've raised your hand. Okay, your it means you're ready. Okay, Olive, good job. Okay, my idea of a question, or you're ready? Um, 
Um, Christine, do we yes? glue the paper to the bottom of the No, box? no, good question. Not yet. We're going to draw first. Olive, you have a question? Um, do we oh. other than like um, cut out the paper? Nope, just wait after you've done that step. We're going to move on to the next step, okay? So I'm going to put my screen share back on and I'm going to show you guys. For the next step, you need a pencil. Okay, so let me get you up. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to use a marker. You guys are going to use the pencil. And I'm going to do something that's going to give me an effect that I'm far away, sort of near mountains. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that goes across the bottom of mine and a little bit of a squiggle. Oh, actually, I got to draw it upside down. Otherwise, you guys don't see it the same way I see it. No problem. So, Elizabeth, do we see that correct now? Now we see it correct, yes. Okay, excellent. I have not figured out how to change that setting. Okay, now I'm going to draw another line that comes halfway into the side like this. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It's just the idea, okay? I'm gonna draw another line that's gonna come out like this. Do you see how that's kind of gonna look like I'm going into, I'm looking at far away mountains. I'm gonna take another line and I'm gonna go up a little higher like this. I'm gonna take another line and go across here and another line and go across here. Ta-da! Now on the top here. Christine, can we move the paper down a little bit only because we can't see the, the what? Where, yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. perfect. Let's see, how are our friends doing? Are you guys, uh, let's see. Good, Braylon, Alexa. So Braylon, that's a big piece of paper. Is it cut the way you need to cut for your box? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Okay, how are we doing, Olive? Everybody's doing okay? Uh, two participants have raised their hands. Ellie and Jackie, go for it. You want to ask me a question, Ellie and Jackie? Um, we're, can you slow down a little bit because we're still drawing the mountain? Okay, sure. I'm just talking and, um, can, and checking out the Can you show us the mountain? Can you please show us the mountain? Uh, who's asking me a question? Jade, go for it. Um, can you yeah. show us the um, picture again? That absolutely. You drew? absolutely. And then Alexa, do you want to ask me a question? Do we need to draw mountains? No, you could do a beach or something, but for, we're going to do a bear for our animal. So mountains seem like a good thing to do for our animal in the background. Okay, but you don't have to do exactly what I do. No can problem. Can you show us? Ever. We'll never tell you that we need you to do the same thing as us, okay? We just give you ideas of how to get started. Okay. I'm going to unmute Elizabeth. Everybody else is getting muted for a second. Okay. So, we're doing, so we're doing a bear in the, in the mountain, mountain background? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Yes. Awesome. Can we also yeah. do a deer? You could do a deer, of course, of course. You could do any animal that you think of that might be in the in the mountains, but I chose a bear for us to do today. So right now we're just creating the background, the environment, like where it lives, right, Christine? Yes. That's yeah. all we're doing. And if yeah, yours, exactly. Yeah, if yours changes a little bit, guys, remember, again, like Christine said, like you don't have to draw mountains, but that's a good starting point. And then you can get creative because I know some of you guys are so creative and you guys think of other things that we don't think of because I've seen it in my other class as well. You know what is so cool? In one of my classes, Elizabeth, someone gave us an idea mm -hmm. and then everybody kind of loved that idea. So we went with that idea on top of the idea that I had come up with that I never, ever even thought of. That's amazing. That was really exciting to me. That's awesome. All right, so now if you are done with your mountains, you're going to take something you have the color with. This part doesn't matter. If you want to color with crayons, you color with crayons. If you want to color with markers, you color with marker. If you want to use watercolors, this part is your choice. Okay? 
I'm going to do colors that I think would appear on a ground, kind of when I would look at mountains, but I don't have to just do all brown, right? So I'm going to do some browns. I'm going to do some darker blues. I'm going to do some greens. Okay, so I'm going to color mine kind of mountainy colors. And I'm going to blend some colors together so that it doesn't just look the same, because that's kind of boring to me. Okay, so I'm going to blend some colors so they overlap. Do you guys know what that word is? Overlap, it means on top of, right? So see how I'm making mine kind of overlap on top? Okay, so I'm going to color a little bit while you guys are working so that we can see the next steps together, but you take your time and you color it however you like to color it. That's looking so good, Christine. Thank you. I'm going to do my sky up here because this is the top of my mountains. I'm going to do my sky. I'm going to leave some area for clouds. So I don't need to worry if I don't have a white marker, right? I could just leave a little extra space like this for clouds. There you go. I know we do, uh, we do shadow boxes uh, when I teach sometimes and what we did for a different technique when we, we were coloring the background with paints and markers and crayons, but then uh, we decided I had some fluffy, uh, you know, the, the stuffing or cotton balls. Oh, that's a great idea. And we glued cotton balls to make it a three-dimensional uh, cloud. Yeah, that's a great idea. I bet that they love that. Yeah. Now, in the, in the grass over here, I'm going to make some little tiny wildflowers. You can do that if you like. You can do boulders or rocks. That's kind of a cool idea, too. Okay, so I'm going to keep coloring for a little bit. But if you have any questions, just feel free to unmute yourself. Because it's kind of not that exciting to just watch Christine color it all day even though I would love to color all day. And Elizabeth, I was telling my other class that sometimes, especially with like a little one at home, I don't have so much time to make art. So when I get to do art with you guys, it makes me so happy because it's like a time I can spend being creative too. We've been making a lot of art lately here. <laughs> I've been drawing yeah, a lot. Yeah, we have. We did a lot of fun uh, salt uh, salt stuff today too. Oh yeah, how did that come out? Did it come out good? Yeah, they came out good. Yeah, mine too. They they seem to really like it. Awesome. These are great. Love it. Another and another thing you can do if you didn't have salt is you could use sand, which looks kind of cool too. Oh, that's right. So just you know, we have to we have to work with what we got. Elizabeth and I say it all the time, make it work. That's exactly what I told our students today. Some of them didn't have a uh, salt, uh, a sand I didn't even think of, but I said they could use glitter, they have it, and then just paint their background. Yeah. Their color. Probably even could use flour, I would think. It would absorb still. True. I'll test that out. So. While everybody's coloring, you guys can take a look at mine for a minute. I'm going to share with you guys something cool I got to do because it's not something that everybody gets to do. And I want to share with you guys because this might be something you can do sometime. So there's a cool mural in the city I live in. I live in North Hollywood. And there's a cool mural that has birds on it. And the birds were painted um, by different people. And there was two birds that were still not painted. And every day I go take my son for a walk, we look at the birds, we talk about the cool colors, we look at the different ones, we pick our favorites. And he loves that mural. But there were still two that were not um, painted. And so I called the company and I said, hey, is somebody gonna come back and paint those? Because I feel like it looks kind of like unfinished because there's two not done. And they said, why don't you paint them? I said, what a great idea. And so the other day they came over and they brought me some paints and my son and I and my sister, we all went out and we painted these cool birds. And now we have a memory forever of something that he did in the city where he was born in case we someday live somewhere else. So now we can always go and look at it and we can remember what he did. So I just drew a few boulders on the bottom of mine. And I'm going to share with you guys for a second the picture of the birds we painted. 
Because if you see someone making art somewhere in the public, you could say to them, hey, I would love to be part of your project. Can I join? And I bet you they'll say yes. And if they don't, that's okay. At least you tried, right? All right, so I'm gonna share with you guys my pictures. It never hurts to ask, right? Um, you can't get something if you don't ask for it. So here's what I'm gonna share. So here's us painting on our birds. So here's the two birds. There's one here and one here, and you can see some of the other birds that were painted. And you can see my son painting this one. And then check this one out. This is one of our finished ones. We did two, but here's one of our finished ones. Pretty cool, huh? Awesome. So I hope you guys like the, seeing those and then get inspired by the idea that you can be part of art too in the public. Go ahead, Alexa. My grandma, she's an artist. She has like a studio at her house. Awesome. And she goes to art studios to show her art. Whoa. And um, I made a, a picture when I was like five. It took me a few days and uh -huh. then I gave it to her and then she showed it to some of the people at the art studio and some people wanted to buy it. Wow, so you are an accomplished uh, artist that has sold your work. Very cool. Do you guys know who the artist Van Gogh is? You probably know his very famous picture called Starry Starry Night, right? When he was alive, nobody ever bought his paintings until after he died. So you are even more famous than Van Gogh right now because you sold your art while you were, while you were still a little girl. That's awesome. I tried making Starry Starry Night. Yeah, that's a cool picture. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love the movement in it. That's what the important part is the movement. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my screen share. Ellie and Jackie, do, uh, do they have a question or did they just, uh, Ellie and Jackie, did you have a question? I see your hand. No. Okay. okay. So on the bottom here, you see I drew some boulders. Okay. And then I want to make my picture look like it's going farther away. So the higher up it goes, the farther it is, the smaller something is. So I'm going to draw some small boulders here. Small little boulders, a lot less, a lot smaller than the ones I drew on the bottom because that makes it look like close up and far away. Even though my picture is not far away, it's right here in my hands. It's a flat piece of paper, but my mind sees that it's close up over here and far away over here because of the smaller boulders. On the very top here, I'm gonna make them even smaller boulders. Okay, and that's gonna make it look even more far away. Now I'm gonna add some more darker colors because the purple is not what I want. I wanna have it black. Okay, and then if you have more time, just spend a few extra minutes adding some more details to your background, okay? And details, I mean, up in my sky, I could draw a little tiny bird. I could draw um, something else small in my sky if I wanted to. I could make um, some wildflowers, right? So see how that's now looking farther and farther away as it's getting smaller and smaller. Okay, I'm going to stop screen sharing for a minute and ask you guys if you need any help. Okay, let's see. How are we doing? Anybody want to show me theirs? Okay, Maya, go for it. Let's check out Maya's. I well, made mine a bit colorful. Wow, that's gorgeous. Did you, did you use these kind of markers that, um, these ones right here? Yes, perfect. So now what you can do with these markers, in case you don't know, this cool trick, let me share with you. If you wanted to, if you use these markers, these Crayola markers, you can take a paintbrush and you can add a little bit of water, which I have to get some water because I didn't have any water with me. Hang on one second. I don't want to stick it in my coffee. You can take a paintbrush 
and you can add some water, which this water is gross from my watercolor. And you can use this and it makes the colors blend even more. So that was something I was going to plan to do, but I know that some of you are not using markers. So if you're not using markers, it's not going to work, which is okay. It doesn't need to be. I just want to give you another avenue if you wanted to use it, okay? So you I'll might not know that water. works. Say again. I'll go get some water. Okay, great idea. Now you don't want to use a lot of water because we don't want our paper getting all yucky and soaked because the spoon, we're going to glue it in the background, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just going to add a little bit of water and kind of blend my colors a little bit more, okay? It's a cool technique. You don't have to do it. And if you're not using markers, don't even worry about it, okay? Yeah, we learned that technique on uh, Monday with the, we taught that on Monday, right, Christine? Oh, that's right. I wasn't sure which class, so I didn't want to assume. Yep. Yeah, that was the first time I did that. <laughs> yeah, super cool. Okay, let's see. Alexa, I'm going to stop sharing because Alexa's holding hers up. And so is Devin. Hang on one second. Let's show Alexa's gorgeous mountains. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Alexa, where are you? Oh, uh, let's see. Braylon. Let's see, Braylon. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, she's already drawn some animals on oh, there. Well, I drew a bear near the river who caught a fish and a mountain lion. Oh, my goodness. Now, I never even thought of putting a bear near the river. What a great idea. I think I will. I got the idea from a grizzly bear. I will be inspired by your idea. Hang on one second, Olive. You're next. And I will use this part of it as a river. So I will do my bear near there. Okay, so let's see, I wanna see. And I thought that blue mountain was a pond or something. Yeah, very cool, Olive. Go for it, Olive, hi. Um, do you, do you, could you use, could you put water on the, the paper when you use the, these kind of markers? I don't know for sure. What you can do is a little sample, take a little paintbrush and put a water on a little corner of it. And if it kind of turns into paint, then you can. If not, then, then no. I'm not sure I don't know those markers, okay? But do a little sample. Okay, who else wants to share? Awesome. All right, well, I think that we might be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, let's see Maya's now. Wow, Maya, good. You added water to I'm the not, so cool. I'm not ready, though. Okay, I'll wait a little bit. Sometimes I go a little too fast, and people just have to remind me. I did not get my feelings hurt, I promise. Just tell me, slow down. Same thing for me, um, Christine. Same thing for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard because we're we're showing it, but we can't see what you guys are doing. So sometimes people say, hey, wait a minute, but that's okay, no problem. Uh, in the meantime, get ready for some terrible jokes. I'm pulling them up right now. Hey, Elizabeth, what do you call a dinosaur that's sleeping? Dinosaur that's sleeping, a sleeposaurus? Sleeposaurus. Yes, a dinosaur. <sighs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, what do you get when you cross a vampire and a snowman? A vampire? You get a frostbite. <laughs> Frostbite is something that happens to your skin when you're in the snow, like if you go um, skiing and you don't have part of your like face covered, you might get a little red skin and that's called a frostbite. I have a joke. Oh, please do tell. Knock, knock. Who's there? Annie. Annie who? Anybody home? <laughs> that's great. All right, here's another joke. joke. Yep. Knock, knock. Oh, actually, oh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask joke. Kayla this, Kalina this one. Kalina, can you do a joke with me real quick? Okay. Okay. Will you remember me tomorrow? Yeah. 
Will you remember me next week? Maybe. Will you remember me next year? Maybe. Knock, knock. I don't know who it is, so I won't open. <laughs> Just say who's there. Who's there? You forgot me already? Okay, who else had a joke for me? Maybe me. me. Uh, Kalina, did you have a joke for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Can I go next? Knock, knock. Who is there? The pizza man. The pizza man who? Uh-oh, your neighbor's knocking on the door. What do you do? <laughs> the neighbor's knocking on the door? Mm -hmm. Does he have a pizza? He was bringing a pizza, but what do you do? What do I do? I say, go away. I don't know who you are. I don't know. What do you do? The no. pizza man, the pizza man, uh, the pizza man keeps on knocking on the back door. What do you do? Uh, tell him to go away. Drop the pizza and run away. I've got a really good joke. Wait, she's not finished telling me. What's the punchline? The pizza man says, hey, sorry, we missed you. You need to open the door to get your pizza, or else you won't pay for no reason. Oh, that's kind of an aggressive pizza man. <laughs> You're so silly. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Can I do a joke? Yeah, who's, who's me? Knock, knock. Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? No, silly cows go moo. <laughs> they're saying oh they go who? They go I have not heard that one before. I love it. Okay, who else? All right, so now we're going to get started on our next one. Next step. So here's how I have mine like this. I'm ready to go, but I don't want to assume you guys are ready to go. So if yours is kind of finished like this, you can move on to the next step. If it's not, don't worry. Put it aside for a few minutes and let's get started on the next step, okay? On the next step, I'm going to actually teach you guys from a step-by-step -step drawing how to draw a bear. Now, does it make sense if my picture is this big that I draw a bear? That's this. Does that make sense? No way, right? I need to draw a bear that's going to fit onto this size paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure about this big for my bear. And I'm going to cut a piece of paper that big so that I know it's going to fit later onto my bear. So I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut a piece like this. And I'm going to see, hmm, is that going to be a pretty good size for my bear? I'm actually going to do two bears. So yes, this is perfect for my first bear that's going to be close up. Okay. We're going to let this one dry for a few minutes. Whoopsie, upside down. We're going to let this one dry for a few minutes. And then I'm going to share with you how to draw a bear. So once you have your new piece of paper cut, we're going to follow a step-by-step -step on how to draw a bear. Okay. I have a joke. Who's I? Um, Jade. Jade, go for it, Jade. Knock, knock. Who's there? Luke. Luke who? Luke, Luke through the people and find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to open this page. And this is a very simple style of bear. Now, if you guys know how to do a step-by-step -step like this, you'll do follow each step along. So I'm going to share with you guys because this is kind of an easy bear you can do, and you can also get more complicated with it when you color it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys start with a pencil on your paper. I'm going to stop the share for a minute so you guys can see my camera. I am going to 
do like this, and I'm gonna put my bear on the side so I can see it, so I can show you the same steps, okay? So here's my paper. I'm gonna start, I want it to be sideways, right? So I'm gonna start with the body, okay? So I need to make my body an oval about this big. Ah, I realize you can't see this. I'm gonna do it with a marker, okay? I'm going to make an oval about this big. You do not need to do it with a marker, and it's actually better if you don't do it with a marker so that you can erase if you make a mistake, okay? Then I'm going to add a circle, a pretty good sized circle like this. On top is going to be my head. Now remember, I got to draw this upside down. Go ahead, Jay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, so I'm confused. Like, um, so should your drawing here be the size like that fits inside your box? Correct. And now we're making another thing that's going to get glued onto our back drawing. Oh, is it going to like get glued onto the back, onto yes. the paper? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, good job. There's also another way you can do one where it's standing up in front, which I'll show you later. Okay, so now that you have these two steps, which is actually complicated because you see my overlapping here and I don't need the overlapping. So I'm gonna redo it real quick so that you guys can see. Okay, so there's my bear. Uh-oh, I'm running out of room for his feet. But you guys will you guys will have room for ears. Okay. Now I'm gonna do these things: a circle for the ears, half circle. I'm gonna do two little eyes. Okay. I'm gonna do a nose like this, and a line for the mouth. Okay. So that's all you need to have done so far. I'm going to see if anybody needs any help. Okay, how are we doing, friends? Cameron and, uh, let's see, Cameron and Noah, are you guys okay? Yeah, um, can we see, um, can we see the page, the bear one last time? Sure. sure. It doesn't have to be one last time. It can be, uh, you can see it a million times if you want. Do you want to see the one that I'm drawing from or the one that I already drew? The one that you're drawing from. Okay, coming right up. Here he is. Okay, so we've already added our body on. So the next step we're going to add on now is we're going to add on the legs, okay? So if you can see here, you're going to add one shape that comes down in the front and one shape that comes down in the back, which I'm going to draw on mine right now. Let me stop this, okay, and show you this one. Okay, give me one second. Okay, so let me show you on mine. So now I've added two legs on there. So cute. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now from this side, I need to add another leg here because this is going to be his front two legs. And under here, do you guys see this part right here? Under here, I'm gonna draw another smaller leg. See how I do that? When I draw it on the edge like this and I stop it right here, it's going to look like that leg is on the other side of his body. I hope that makes sense. Now, bears also have a lot of toes, don't they? Bear paws, right? Bear paws. So I drew my bear paws on there. 
Now, obviously you could get more detailed into your bear if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So now this is the tricky step. This is the step I'm gonna ask you to cut this out. Now, it's kind of complicated to get around all these little lines like this. So what I like to do is a little trick I'm gonna teach you that you're gonna know forever when you're making art. Instead of having to cut like this where my hand keeps getting in the way, I'm gonna cut a circle all the way around what I am cutting. And I'm going to stop like this. Now, when I'm ready to cut, I don't have all this extra paper that my hand's gonna get in the way of. I can go pretty close to what I wanna cut now. Does that make sense? I'm gonna stop and ask everybody if they need any help. Jade B, go for it. Um, so I, I just want to tell you, I already like knew that trick. Oh, excellent. Well, I'm so glad you knew it because it makes life so much easier. Yeah. Um, Maya, go for it. Can you show the bear that you were working from again? Yes, I can. Thank you for asking. Good job. Here you go. Now, in order to make my bear uh, close up and far away, which I wanted to do with my mountains, I'm gonna draw a second bear that's exactly the same, but smaller. But I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't want you guys to spend Wait, your time- Wait, I need to see it again. The, you got the... it. Don't get upset, no problem. Take your time. I'm cutting my bear out while I'm talking to you, so I'm not looking. If you have a question, just ask Elizabeth or raise your hand or start unmute yourself. Okay, little bear, little bear. Cameron, do you have a question, Cameron? Go ahead. Are you supposed to, are you supposed to like cut the bear out? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, so you can do the trick that Christine just showed you, which is just cut around it like a circle, or kind of between whatever's easier for you, okay? Yeah, if it's too hard to cut it out with a, a real close to the lines, don't get stressed out about it. Just cut in a circle as close as you can around, okay? I like that technique, Christine. I do that sometimes too, because sometimes it's really hard to cut in between the legs. Yeah, totally. Paper, I know. <laughs> And then you get upset, but you know what? Actually, it's really a good skill to have to know how to use scissors correctly. So if you have extra time when you're not making, um, when you're just bored at home and you're in quarantine like the rest of us, you can just practice cutting things out with scissors. It's really a good skill to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for a second. I'll go back and show you later. And I'm gonna show you my little bear. Here's my little friend. I've named him Grizzly. Grizzle. I named him Grizzle. All right, so here's Grizzle. And let's see if Grizzle's going to look good in his land. Let's see. Well, I think Grizzle's going to look pretty cool. I'm going to put Grizzle up in the very front. And then remember I said we're going to make another bear later? We're going to end up making a small bear and we're going to put it right next to the river here. But I'm afraid we might run out of time if we don't move on to gluing this in our background, okay? So let's take this off for a minute. Let's turn our paper over. And before we glue it in the background, let's triple check that it fits inside of our box, okay? Let's make sure that our paper fits inside of our box before we spend time gluing, it, okay? Now I'm gonna get my glue out. I have my glue in a cup and I have a paintbrush, but if you have a glue stick, that actually works really good too. Okay, I'm using this goopy glue because this is what I already had out from the last class. And I'm gonna reuse materials whenever I can. Okay, so I'm gluing like crazy all over mine. If I do one spot of glue in the middle and say I'm done and stick it down on my box, is it gonna hold very well? No, okay. So we wanna make sure that we're gluing around it the best we can like this, okay all the way to the edges. It's gonna make our box stick down so much nicer, okay? 
Now I'm going to glue it inside my box. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm going to take this off so that you guys can see. And you can see my box now has my background glued inside. Okay. Now, while you guys are working on that step, I'm going to do another quick bear so I can show you my, what I was talking about when I say we're going to do another bear. Okay, so you guys keep working and I'm going to quickly draw my other bear. That's so cool, Christine. Thanks, Elizabeth. So once they have their background, they just put the, they just glue the piece of paper on the back and uh -huh. then glue it to the back of their box. Exactly. Like that. Exactly. You can use glue stick or regular glue, right? Regular glue, yep. If you have hot glue and somebody's there helping you, in my last class, somebody only had hot glue, but make sure if, if you're doing hot glue, someone is helping. Okay. Well, Jade, you have a question, honey? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, can I only um, do one bear? Of course. Do you think I'm going to say, no, I need to see two bears, Jade, or I'm going to be so mad? No. <laughs> no. Okay, on my second bear, I put a little tail, but you don't have to put a tail, okay? Yeah, on mine, I just wanted to have a little tail on the second bear. Okay, now I'm gonna cut him out while you guys are talking, and I'm gonna quickly put, um, put some marker on him so you can see him better. And a bunny roasting a tail. Is somebody asking me? That's so cool, Breland. Look at Christine. Look what Breland did. She did, a, she did a rabbit roasting. Oh, awesome. So you guys can actually just draw like Breland's doing right onto it, or you can do this technique. And I'm going to show you in, in a minute. Um, boy, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. I wish we had more time to make awesome art, but we have still a little bit. Is that right. a dog behind you on your bed? It sure is a dog behind me. His name is Domino, and he's a little bit crazy, but he's real cute. Yeah, same with my cat. Oh, really? It's crazy. What, what does your cat do that's crazy? I jump around, run around. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sometimes he jumps onto the dining table. Oh, my goodness. That's Can I show you my picture? I would love to see your picture. Wow, look at how gorgeous. Oh my goodness, look at your bear. Awesome. Can I, can I show you my bear? Actually, let me spotlight you for a minute. Alexa, show yours again. Wow. I and she did the bear some right onto the paper. You did an amazing job. You did some cool billy goats in the background too. And do you the see how the goats. mountain goats? Yeah, same thing. Do you see how the mountain goat's legs are up high like that? Put another small mountain in the background behind him, and then he'll be standing on two mountains. The, the one that's, oh yeah, but see where his legs are on the top? Okay, yeah, do that. Okay, that looks amazing. Let's see who else wants to share. Maya's great bear, awesome Maya. Here's Maya's bear. Super cute. Okay, who else wants to show? Okay. So I'm going to really quickly color in my bear. You don't have to take time to color in your bear right now. You can um, be watching. And then this is a project that's actually really cool because you can have time to finish it later. It's not always do we get to finish our artwork in the first few minutes that we want to finish it. Sometimes we have to go back and spend more time. But that's actually a blessing because the more you work on something, the better it gets. I think Elizabeth knows that. She makes artwork sometimes that takes days. Yes. Can I show you my Okay, so I'm coloring my bear really quickly so I can show you guys near and far. Okay. So, hurry up, bear. Okay. So, let's see. Baby bear is not actually a baby. He just looks like a baby because he's farther away. I'm going to glue it down into my box so you can see really good. And then I'm going to share with you another technique. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
All right, so now I've got my baby bear glued in and I'm gonna do my smaller bear, which is not actually a baby bear. It just looks like a baby bear because it's farther away. So let me put this one in. And I'm gonna put this one by the water. There we go. And now I'm gonna show you Let's see, actually, maybe I can show you on my camera. That might show it a little easier. Okay, so now you guys can see inside my box. Let's put it this way. Okay, so do you see the one bear is in the front? Okay, so this bear is in the front. I'm going to move his legs down a little more flat. And then this bear is actually farther away and it looks farther away it looks smaller so if something goes farther away it gets smaller and smaller now i would like for you guys to show me if you were able to make any animals you could also make some more smaller animals here now if i was going to draw another bear and i wanted it to be even farther away like back here i would probably make it about this small so i have big medium and small. Okay, does that make sense? Is that your dog? That's my dog. Sorry, he's being a bad boy. Let me help make him go out of the room. Okay. This is looking great, guys. How are you guys doing over there? Is your, are your backgrounds done? How many of you guys added a po uh, the bear already? Let's see. Great. Olive, let me spotlight you. Hold on one second. Let me see. Olive, go ahead and talk, honey. Olive, I want to take a picture. Hold on. That looks so cool. Okay. Hold on. Take a picture. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Where you can draw a tree. Oh, let me get a piece of paper. Okay, and I'm going to cut out a tree really quickly. Let's see, Olive, can I see yours real quick? Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Great job, Olive. Very nice. These are incredible. I'm so impressed with these. I'm quickly coloring in a tree so you guys can see. This is going to be the worst tree you've ever seen in your life, but it's just because I'm trying to rush a little. But you're going to see what I'm going to do right now. And this will give you another idea for a different technique that you can do to make this even more amazing because it'll be 3D. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do here. Okay, the world's worst tree in the whole world is coming up. There we go. All right, ta-da, world's worst tree. So here's what I'm going to do with my tree. I'm going to cut the bottom of it into a flap. And one flap is going to go backwards. And one flap is going to go forwards. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, now what I can do with those two flaps is I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of them. Okay. And oh, wow, my glue actually turned a little bit brown. And I'm going to glue it into the front of my box like this. And now my box has a 3D element. Does that make sense to everybody? Let me see if I can hold it up a different way. That looks kind of weirdly crooked to me. So you put me on um, put me on the um, spotlight view, friends, and then you can see that I have a 3D element in front of my box, which is my tree, and now it holds pretty great with just those two flaps. And so now it looks like there's trees on my mountain. I could draw some more trees in the background here. I could draw, um, I could add some uh, uh, sand, even if I wanted to here, or some, I could go outside and I could get a little grass and I could go and actually glue the grass on there. 
whatever elements you think you could add. Another thing you could do is, I'm gonna stop for one second, is you could have something hanging. So if I wanted to, I could make a quick sun. Okay, a quick sun. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. All right, so here's my sun. Okay, and I could either glue it in the background like this if I wanted to, or I could take a little bit of string. So we're not making an exactly finished piece right now. What I'm doing is I'm showing you some different techniques. So on the front of my box, let's see how I can do this. I'm gonna make a little hole, okay, in the top with the scissors, okay, a little tiny hole in the top with my scissors, which I'll show you in just a second. This one, you might need to ask a grown up to help you because it's a little hard to do, especially if you have a thick box. Christine, can they use, they can just use tape, right? Oh, tape is even a better idea. Tape is better. <laughs> no problem, better. let's use tape. Yeah, thank you. Let's not have any cut fingers. Let's just use tape, which I don't have any tape. I'm going to have to go grab some, just so I can show you. So yeah, th these are such cool techniques that you can use. And then remember, you're not going to end up probably finishing your shadow box today. I mean, right now, class, because we don't have that much time left, but get creative. You can also add the sides, add background to the sides of your box and to the bottom. You know, you can add all that kind of stuff as well. So Elizabeth, um, on Friday, what I was suggesting to my other class is that we spend a few minutes in the beginning of the class and we kind of do a, like a little art gallery share because a lot of people that were doing the salt paintings, it was hard for them to hold them up because they were going to drip. And so instead of having a chance that it might drip, we said, let's take a few minutes in the beginning of our class and we'll have a little art gallery show. So now you guys can see that my sun is hanging from the top. Does that make sense? So that adds another element. Thank you, Elizabeth, for not thinking of poking through the box. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna spotlight myself so you guys can see. So the sun is actually not hanging in the right spot. I probably want it to hang a little bit over here because I don't want it to be right next to the bear, okay? So those are two cool ideas that you can use. But now, unfortunately, we've run out of time and I'm more inspired by your artwork. So I'm gonna put my artwork away for now and I'm gonna ask you guys to share yours, okay? If you are not comfortable sharing it right now and you'd rather share it on Friday, you just let me know. Okay, I see the first one is Alexa, go for it. Wow, beautiful Alexa. Unbelievable. It's a mountain goats and a bird and a oh, pond with a bear. I am so impressed with what you did with the mountain in the background. You did exactly what I wanted you to do. Awesome. Okay, who else would like to share? Uh, Maya, go for it. I'm not done, but I put the sun hanging and a bunny I, in the box. I the love it. Super cool. You could even, if you guys got really inspired on yours, you could even add some paper on the sides. And how you would do that is to trace it the same way we trace the background and cut it a little bit smaller. Anybody else like to show us? Can I show? Of course, go for it. Okay. I didn't glue it. Um, okay on this yet but a good bag. wow how beautiful it's looking yeah and this part is going to be the same color as this excellent so and then so, this is my bear oh my goodness your bear is so cute so elizabeth perhaps in the google drive where we're leaving some of our artwork i can put a picture of the bear so that yes absolutely yeah send it to me and i can upload it or you can upload it yourself too okay Have perfect whatever you want to do so I'm afraid, I'm afraid you've run out of time now, friends. So I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. But I'm very proud of you. You did an awesome job. And let me let you know what you need for Friday, OK? 
Okay, let me just double check my list and see what we need for Friday. So we have everything we need. Okay, doke, let's see. Okay, so here's my paper. On Friday, you will need a few sheets of white paper, a couple, maybe three or four, pencil, eraser, glue or glue stick, a black marker or a Sharpie, and something to color with. It could be colored pencils, crayons, oil pastels. This one is going to be a dry material, so no watercolors, okay? So let me go over that one more time because we're going to make a mosaic. So water paper, uh, white paper, pencil, eraser, glue or glue stick, black marker or Sharpie, and coloring material. Okay, not watercolors. Any questions? Awesome. I cannot wait to see these finished products. If you want, you can have your parents upload them, but also bring them on Friday, which is dress up 4th of July Friday, and we will share with each other. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome artist. Bye. Thank you, Christine. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Braylon. Bye, Jade. Bye, Maya. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Olivia. Bye, Alice. Bye, Devin. Bye, Bye Kaya. Bye, Emma. Bye.